How are you going? I'm good. How are you? Pretty well. How long did it take from your decision to enter politics to actually realising that goal and, and taking office? Well, I never really uh, made a decision to enter politics. Uh, go back to local government. We'd moved into Albany, been here three or four years, and they said they were going to merge the town and the shire. The town spent all their money, uh, was in debt, and had a lot of nice things. The mm -hmm. shire spent no money, had it in the bank, and um, had really crappy roads. So I said, look, you know, if they're going to merge them, the town's going to spend all the shire's money. And yeah. being an accountant, I didn't want to see that happen. Put my hand up, made sure that I got in there. And the first day I was in there, I said, roads. The other shires around us are laughing at us because our roads are so bad. Mm. So basically tied up the funds really quickly um, so they couldn't be wasted. And that, that, was, that was my reason for joining. While I was a councillor, a friend asked me to run for Liberals for Forest for the state election. And I had never really considered it, but I thought, yeah, I can do that. I'd run in the local government. It seemed like a bit of fun. People listen to you. You get a chance to, to talk, meet new people and talk to people, hear what they have to say. And uh, so I ran as a Liberals for Forest candidate and had six or eight people helping me quite strongly. It, it felt really good. It seemed like a nice idea. It was really just to try to get the whole idea of the forest being important across to a lot of Liberal Party members. So I had no affiliations with the Liberal Party, um, but I, I recognized by then that the forest needed more support. Well, that was 2001. By 2005, I put my hand up for the Greens. And then I ran in the seat of Albany for the Greens, which was really when you run in the lower house seat, it's really just to support the upper house seat so that it's like you can spread that person out and you can talk on their behalf and say, please vote for the Greens. And so I ran in 2005, 2008, 2013. Then I read, ran for O'Connor, the federal seat mm. for the Greens in the federal 2013 election. And then uh, in 2017, uh, the Greens were looking for a candidate for the upper house, and I put my hand up for that. I've got about two years until um, the next election. Do you think that's enough time for me? What would be some tips you could give me um, on my run? Okay, we'll start early in terms of getting people to know you. So if you're running for a Senate position for WA, that's a lot of ground to cover. You'll have to get known. So I would say, given your, your youth, um, your age, uh, get talking to younger voters, get them enrolled. Um, I say it, it really should be listening to them, but you'll need to get a following. Social media is working. You know, if you do podcasts or um, something that gets you out there and gets shared a lot, uh, that's, that's where you'll need to know. Now, to get a Senate seat, though, you need, you know, I think 14% of the vote. Even with yeah. preferences, you're probably still going to need about 10% and then get people to give you your preferences. So if you're looking for that, you're going to need more than just the youth vote. I've noticed some senators have gotten in on preferences. Um, uh, like I'm pretty sure Michaelia Cash only just scraped across the line. Um, and I'm wondering, do you think that's representative? To <laughs> because It's the system we have. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, our, our Senate, even though it's only you know, uh, 12 seats, it is proportional. Same with, I can talk more about the state level with the legislative council that I'm in. It is proportional in that, you know, you get six members from the region, from whichever, you know, each of the six regions. And so you only need one seventh of the vote plus one. It's about 14 something, 14 and a half percent. I want to meet a lot of politicians and I want to meet them from across the whole political divide which means meeting some people that I probably won't agree with much. I've had some experience, I've interviewed some One Nation politicians in West Australia during the last uh, federal election um, and <laughs> and it was different. Um, is there anyone you've met uh, since you got into parliament that you've, you've thought, how did you get here? Did, did, did they... <laughs> Uh, no, I can't say specifically there's people that I would say that about. But I do now understand the process for the major parties is you, you, do, the, um, you do the time. You know, if you're out there 
uh, door knocking or getting votes and campaigning and helping and assisting on other people's uh, um, election campaigns, and then possibly work in a office for a sitting member. You get to know the people, you get to know the party, and it puts you in a position where people know people in the party know who you are. And yeah. so when it comes time for selecting the candidates, you often get selected. One of the policies I've been developing to take to the election is about having quotas for people with disabilities in um, employment. So it would be different based on what kind of business it was, but uh, giving opportunity for people from that background to actually get their foot in the door. I noticed mm -hmm. that the Greens have adopted or talked about similar policy. John Steele was talking about quotas for the public service. Do you think that's something I... If I got elected, I don't know why I'm laughing. I really, did. I actually do want to get elected. Um, but at this point, it seems a long shot. Do you think I'd be able to work with the Greens on that? Jordan would always have a listen to you. If you were in there as another senator, they work with everybody they can. And I would suggest that you give Jordan's office a, a ring and see if uh, you can do this with him too. He's a lovely person to talk to. So I had to campaign in a historically conservative seat held by liberals and nationals. Um, how how do you think I should try and communicate my message effectively if I say I engage with someone who's a climate change denialist or thinks that you know boat people should go back where they came from? Yeah. How, how do you work with that? Um, there's some people that you're not going to change, and you can just accept that. My plan along the lines is with those people. I want them to see that I'm not a monster. That the Greens have ideals, ideals and ideas, and try to get them to stop putting us down or, you know, making fun of us in front of other people and trying to stop other people. I, I really just want to tone them down so they can't make unfair, unfalse, false claims against us. Right. Yeah. Um, but if they're not so far gone, you know, that they're still thinking, they're still considering ideas. Um, then I usually try to find some common ground. And I've spent a considerable amount of time overseas traveling and now I'm, I'm spending a year in New Zealand. And it's become pretty clear to me that Australia's stance on climate change and our treatment of refugees and asylum seekers, it's damaged our reputation considerably on the international stage. Um, do you think it's too late to repair that damage? Politics can change with a change of government. Unfortunately, even if we change from liberal, liberal to labor, in some ways they're not that much different. They still get donations from uh, corporations, mining corporations and others, they're still afraid to to press mining and, uh, and fossil fuels to actually do the right thing. Where we're seeing the change is those corporations are starting to realize they need to do something. And they're the ones that are going to actually bring in some sort of a, a, a climate po process or carbon price or something. There's, because our governments are just too fearful. Um, I shouldn't say our governments, our parties are. The only other way it's going to change is if, say, we get Labour in there, but they have a, um, uh, they share the power with the Greens or some other leftish leaning group. Not leftish leaning, just another group that understands that we have to do something about climate change. I had an Englishman come up to me in a bar in Italy, um, in Perugia, and and have a big go at me about how um, how we treat asylum seekers and and the policies. Ooh. We've got, yeah. and it's been a continuous theme and, and I've traveled all around Europe and Southeast Asia and now New Zealand, um, and it's always come up. That's our reputation now. And I don't see a way forward with the two major parties having the positions they currently hold. I'm hoping that, you know, if Labor get in, uh, they'll soften their stance and they'll at least put some more money into the UNHCR and things like that. But, um, how, how can I, if I became a senator, do something about that? I feel like I'd be a little powerless. No, you work with other groups, other parties and senators that agree with you. So it's a slow process, but it's a generational thing. And we just have to make sure that the more right wing, younger senators uh, don't get stuck in their ways. Um, mm. We have to be able to change and adapt. And that's why we need a loud voice from progressive people. Some people have been taking notice lately that uh, the countries who have female leaders seem to be doing better than the countries 
with male leaders in the response to COVID-19. I'm a white, privileged male <laughs> from Australia, um, and I would like to see more women in politics, but do you think my, my gender will be an issue? Uh, Not yet. There's still a lot of people who still put male before female just because that's what people grew up with and that's what they assume. And males usually come across with more impact and they're, you know, taller, more imposing. You know, there's, there's so much natural stuff there that most people have to work to change, except in the younger people. Younger people, I don't think, see gender so much as older people. And I think what we're seeing, it's females, but it's also a new way of thinking. And that's, it's that it's a younger mind or an older mind is what I divide up the politicians as. The old ones are stuck in, this is how it's been done. That's how we have to keep it going. The younger mind is one that says, we can be collaborative. We can be flexible. We can adapt. We can, mm -hmm. we can do something new. We can try new ideas. Less of the old boys club. Um, oh, none of the old boys club. None of the, yeah, none of the old boys club. I'm going to thank you for your time before it cuts out. I'm not sure when it's going to cut out. So thank you for um, for joining me on your Sunday off. I really appreciate your time. Sure, um, anytime.